Today on Here for the Right Reasons, Kendall Long explains why she returned to Bachelor in Paradise ahead of Joe's proposal to Serena. Because, and I even said, like, if there's going to be a proposal, I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to go to, I don't want to yeah. go to the beach because um, that's not my day. That's their day. Plus, we get our first look at Rachel and Gabby as the Bachelorettes. And Becca Tilly confirms her relationship with Haley Kiyoko after four years of dating. Plus, the real reason Aaron Rodgers did not attend JoJo and Jordan's wedding. We've got that plus so much more on today's Here for the Right Reasons. Hey guys, Christina Garibald here with Us Weekly Senior Editor Sarah Heron. Welcome to another big week of Bachelor news. We say it every week, but it just keeps keeps going, keeps rolling. Kind of a big week, kind yeah. of a big week. I'm into it. Definitely. But before we get into all the news, let's see what you guys have to say about last week's show. Yes, I'm loving all these comments. We have someone who goes simply by C, mm-hmm. respect it, just very gossip girl. C says, Chris was love bombing Jacenia and using her to get a rose to still be there when Alana arrived. It's a fair perspective. I think a lot of people may agree with that one. Yeah, I definitely think there's something to be said for what was going on in that conversation. And was he ready for Alana? They have their side. Jesenia has their side. After rehashing, you know, drama from last year, I think we can all agree that they're going to have to agree to disagree. Exactly, exactly. And um, so Helen says, remember Raven and Adam are from Dallas. I think that is the connection because last week we were like, how come Raven and Adam are like the only ones from Bachelor Nation at JoJo and Jordan's wedding? I forgot that they all lived in Dallas together. That makes so much sense. I'm so I'm so happy. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Helen. Yes, like you said, uh, we appreciate everybody's comments. Uh, so keep sending them in and we love reading them. Um, so yeah, keep them coming. All right, well, let's get into the news of the week and keep talking about JoJo and Jordan because the two are enjoying a very romantic honeymoon getaway in Greece after saying I do. However, there was one person that was noticeably absent from the wedding. Of course, jo- Jordan's brother, Aaron Rogers. Now a source tells us there is still a family rift and the brothers haven't reconciled or repaired their relationship. The source tells us it's a sad situation for the family and especially for Jordan, who really does love his brother. Aaron missed out on his big day and that's something Jordan's never going to forget. Jordan invited his entire family, including Aaron, even knowing he most likely wouldn't attend since they've been distant for a long time now. This makes me sad. I would like really want to know like what what is so bad that they can't move past. I know. I went back because I wrote this story and you know, we were trying to figure out whether yeah. Aaron and was gonna be there. And I went back to some of the old stuff and I pulled some quotes from when he was on the show. And it really is just so interesting because it's still so cryptic, but it's you know, him saying we just don't see eye to eye on a lot of things. Um, but then he did an interview that summer, I guess after the proposal aired, telling the Hollywood reporter in 2000. 2016, which was, you know, six years ago when they were on the show, that he can't imagine a world in which he wouldn't invite his entire family to his wedding or want them there. So what we've heard now is that he did indeed extend the invitation. Aaron, you know, didn't take it. I don't know if, you know, he, it's according to our source, he didn't expect him to, but I think maybe it like feels like another below. Um, we know that their dad has previously kind of commented on it in the past because um, he was estranged from their parents too. But I think that relationship has been mended a little bit. Um, when Aaron was in all that hot water for stuff with COVID and the vaccine and his status, his dad told USA Today that, you know, he's proud of his son for speaking his mind and doing what he would have done and that it's a work in progress. So there has been some sort of headway with Aaron and his parents, but it seems that Jordan and Luke, his brother and Aaron, there's still a major disconnect there. But yeah, I mean, I want like framing Britney Spears. I want framing Rogers family. Seriously. This like, yeah, I really need to like get into this. I always remember on their hometown date where they set a table setting for Aaron. Do you remember that? Oh, shady. <laughs> so awkward. I love that so much. And then Aaron was asked about it, like at like Packers, like training camp. Yes. And he was like, I don't watch the show. I think it's inappropriate. They're talking about family matters, but I wish him luck in the competition. <laughs> the competition. Well, so look good. at them. Six years later, married. Uh, they put Posted some videos from their wedding. It looked absolutely beautiful. Well worth the wait, I guess. A hundred percent. And, you know, as we gear up for The Bachelor to return, who knows if we're going to get maybe even two proposals and weddings. Yes. Probably not, but we are getting our first look at Rachel and Gabby as the Bachelorettes and um, paying, paying tribute to Mean Girls in the first teaser for season 19. Take a look. We're going shopping for a husband. (laughs) 
Um, the pair are obviously the first joint bachelorettes in the history of the franchise. Gabby and Rachel will be by each other's side as they embark on their bachelor journey with the teaser declaring that they are two best friends. Mm -hmm. In addition, the producers gave a nod to their st both the stars on the poster, changing the name to the bachelorettes with an S for the season. What do you think of this teaser? I mean, I thought it was adorable. I mean, I like the little mean girls nod. Um, I'm ready for it. I'm so still so curious about how this is going to play out. Um, you know, they they are saying that they are going to be best friends. They're going to be by each other's side throughout this whole thing. But I can't imagine that there's not some competition. I don't know. I, I feel like it's going to be like a double shot at love, like Paulie and Vinny type of thing. I can't say I've viewed a double shot at love. I know you probably have because you've interviewed them countless <laughs> times. I cannot say I've tuned in. Um, and I do think it is, you know, they're going to be going hard on this best friend, mm -hmm. BFF narrative, the mean girls of it all. Um, I don't know if it's going to feel organic to us as viewers. I mean, I thought this teaser was kind of cute, but they're no actresses, no, um, which not. they shouldn't be. <laughs> but it also already felt a little like scripted force to me. Yeah. Um, so I would be interested to find out, you know, we're can't wait to watch it all play out. And then me always thinking bigger picture, like, a couple years down the line like what were they really thinking when they were kind of putting this and did they feel comfortable and is this going to be this like supportive bff journey or is it going to just be presented to us that way mm -hmm. um but i'd have to imagine you know i think i've heard that after night one they like are each going to pick their guys and kind of stick with that but in what world are they not going to be overlapping mm -hmm. yeah is yeah. my guess Right. Or it's like, if it's like two separate shows in one, like the first hour. It's a lot for us to have to try to watch too. No, definitely. It's like, is the first hour going to be dedicated to Gabby? The next hour going to be dedicated to Rachel? Like how, like, it's going to be very interesting to see how this all plays out. So well, yeah. and when it does, we're going to break it down each and every week. That's right. Yes. All right. Well, let's move on to Becca Tilly because she and Haley Kyoko finally confirmed their relationship after four years of dating. I love this. Becca teased the pair's romance with a brief cameo in, Haley's music video for the girls. Now, in the footage, Haley served as a bachelorette esque lead of a queer version of the show, um, which is, of course, is a nod to Becca's um, bachelor bachelor past. Um, now, following the release, Becca confirmed the pair's romance via Instagram. She shared a montage of their milestones, writing, "Hard to say if this is a hard or soft launch, but it is a launch." Take a quick look. following uh, the news of their relationship. She wrote on Instagram, I have been crying on and off all day. I don't know that I can properly form adequate words to express how much the love and support means, but I just want to say thank you. And to everyone who has known about us for the last four years and gave us the time and space to do it in our own time, the magnitude of that alone is not lost on me. I am so grateful. Love this relationship. Love them. So excited for them. You know, it, there's been speculation that they've been dating because they've, or at least really good friends for quite some time and now that it is out there they just seem so happy and so in love yeah a hundred percent I mean I've heard about this for so long and yeah. it's just kind of one of those things where it's a weird not a weird but a good boundary in line that kind of like even media has where it's like you're not going to out someone in, especially in 2022 like we've moved past that um and I think it is so interesting and I love that Becca even acknowledged that not that that's like the main part of this but just like anyone who knew whether it was friends and family or you know media that it was just like oh we're not gonna push this like it, it's your life it's your relationship it's your sexuality um and I also listened to her podcast that she put out this week talking about everything and um, it was really sweet so if you're a fan of Becca or this relationship I recommend listening to it but she talked about how 
she doesn't necessarily identify as a lesbian Mm -hmm. and like Haley she but growing up like looking back she was like I thought the sign was cute she was like thinking about it like I guess I always did like Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet in Titanic Mm -hmm. I liked Joey and Pacey in Dawson's Creek Mm -hmm. like she was like it makes sense and both of her sisters are lesbians which I didn't know that because two sisters that identify as lesbians Mm -hmm. um and when she met Haley she said she knew something was different right away and that like night Haley asked one of their mutual friends is Becca into girls and they were like no her sister is though like she's supposed to come tomorrow you should meet her and then once Becca heard that she like knew that if she made a move which Haley probably wouldn't necessarily see coming but she wouldn't reject it because she knew she like felt the spark too and Becca made the first move and kissed her and like that was like two days after meeting and they've been together ever since like long distance with tour and it's just it's so crazy like four years of a relationship and it's, it's, it's so interesting. No, it's so interesting. And like I said, they seem really in love and really happy. And like you said too, it's so nice for all of their friends to kind of respect their boundaries and kind of keep this under wraps for four years. Uh, Four years is a long time to not be public and not, you know, she's asked about her relationship all the time. And yeah. like, she would just say like my really, and she talked about it on a podcast, like they avoided using pronouns. And she was like yeah. thinking her podcast, like Tanya, her best friend and their producers who like would sometimes catch her be like, by the way, you said she here, like, do we need to like redo that line? And like, it's just like, it was such a sweet story, honestly, yeah. like how supportive everyone is. I love it. I love it so much. And uh, they were at Jojo and Jordan's wedding. Of course, she was served as a bridesmaid and, you know, good for her. Good for her. Really happy. They were also her. at Ben Higgins wedding together, which yes, I thought was right. interesting. Mm-hmm. she threw in there that like another that's a lot of people who then probably saw that and you know that's right and if I you, love it. I, I and if you looked at their her comment section like she was just flooded with support from bachelor nation you know yes. everybody from jojo to ben to nick to everybody in between everybody was really supportive of robert her, so. graham right right her ex. in between yeah. after her bachelor seasons throw right. him in there throwback name Love it. Um, Okay, well, moving on to Rachel Lindsay. She is opening up on the Taking It Out podcast, which is obviously co-hosted by her husband, Brian Abasolo, about expanding their family. She said, quote, it's not fair. It really isn't because we have to make a choice that the other side doesn't if you want to have children. Not all women want children, but if you do want children or family, you have at some point to make a choice. It's really scary thought. I'm dealing with that right now. I'm strategically in my mind trying to plan out what would be the best time. Then you have to take your time doing that and realize it might not be as easy as you thought. We can't be like July, 2022. I want to make this happen when it could be a lot more difficult. Um, Brian's talking about co-host Meg Johnson asked if there'll be little ones around soon. And Brian and Rachel said that they are already taking the steps. Interesting. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I get that, you know, it is like, if you want to have, have a family and, you know, have a career, it's kind of hard. Sometimes you do have to choose. And, you know, she made this big move going across country to be a co-host for, um, extra. And she's been doing that for quite some time. And, you know, they, I guess now is the next step and they want to start a family. So good for them. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that it's just, you know, the genetics and the biology of it all. It's never going to be fair. Never going to be fair ever. All right. Well, let's get into our Bachelor talk. And I know that you recently caught up with Kendall Long to talk about her time on Bachelor in Paradise. It is such an interesting conversation. Thank you, Christina. Yes, Kendall obviously appeared on the 2021 season of The Bachelor spinoff alongside her ex-boyfriend, Joe. The former couple dated for nearly two years after meeting on season five of BIP in 2018. And on season seven, Kendall had to navigate seeing Joe fall in love with Serena take a look ultimately in the end like when we were there we just wished happiness for each other and that's all we ever wanted and um I got along with them and I don't know it, it I was only there for four days I think everyone makes it seem like I was there for like a really long time you were only there for four days I didn't last long I was very much like okay came here it's a lot harder than I thought I'll try it out for a couple days not for me And so, um, and then I stayed for the end, um, because, um, Hmm. I'm not sure how much I can say. Yeah. What can uh, you say about that at the end? (laughs) So I, I was under the impression that Joe was going through a lot of mental difficulty with our relationship and me being there. And so for me coming back to talk to him, um, it would be a way to be like, Hey, this chapter's closed. It was kind of weird the way we ended it, but let's make it not weird and let's move on. Um, no idea there would ever be any sort of proposal at all. Like not in my mind. I, because, and I even said like, if there's going to be a proposal, I don't want to talk to him. I don't want to go to, I don't want to go to the beach because, um, that's not my day. That's their day. And so, uh, finding out later that there was a proposal actually made me really upset and a bit angry. 
Uh, so, but that's just what it ended up being. And hopefully, um, the situation that took place didn't affect, it seems to not affect their relationship anyway, or their, their proposal in any way. It still felt, you know, hopefully it felt just as special, but, um, I would have preferred not to be there that day. That is very fair of you to, you know, have not wanted to be there for that. And I know that it's not always what it seems. And your friend, Jacqueline, you mentioned her, she's getting married. She told me, I remember when that was airing, she was like, Kendall didn't know. And I was like, yes, Jacqueline's getting justice for Kendall. Yeah. I love Jacqueline. She's so great. Um, because as soon as I got back, you know, I, my close friends, Jacqueline included, I like, said everything that happened. Um, and so looking back, of course, like w- when things are airing, that's when you get all of the opinions and, you know, and because I chose not to watch it, it was something that I was kind of battling with because you know this you want to watch it and defend yourself um but I got to a point where I felt like it was a waste of time to even try to defend myself I just like for me the most important opinions are people that I love my family my friends um and so that's kind of what I focused on during that time and I took a step back and I thought it just wasn't uh, emotionally worth it to put myself through the battle of proving myself because you know why it just, I just don't see a reason why <laughs> yeah no definitely I I said this to you earlier the fact that she was only there for four days blows my mind I mean you see my face I was like four days you were on the show for like the whole time it's insane so like what we I mean we talked about this what is the timeline that goes down on Bachelor in Paradise it makes no sense to me I mean I guess like because there is so many cast members they only need to film you for a certain number of hours a day to stretch that footage for days and she made a good point she was like yeah I think they teased me walking down for a week so maybe it felt like that too and me whether I was gonna leave and then you know a big takeaway was obviously her saying that you you know everyone knew kind of when she showed up that day of when Joe was gonna propose to Serena and it was confusing because as I said to her on the episode if you listen I'm like it it, honestly from the viewer's perspective it felt like the three of you were handling this as mature as you possibly could Mm -hmm. um in a situation that was really awkward for everyone and I was she didn't watch she couldn't watch the show so she didn't know how it aired and I was like no it actually came out pretty well until the end when it seemed like you showed up to get more closure, even though we already watched you get closure with Joe, you showed up seconds before he was about to propose to another woman to get this closure. And she hesitated for a second, clearly not knowing what she could say, but she said what she needed to say by saying she was told that he was struggling in some sense mentally and also wanted the closure. So clearly there was some producer manipulation saying, you got to get to the beach. She fell for it in yeah. one sense of the word and didn't know who's going to propose and claim she asked, is there going to be a proposal? She knew how that would look and they told her no. And she was pissed when she found out when the show aired that there was a proposal. And that's, that's some dark stuff. That is, I mean, I'd be pissed as hell too. And if I were her, I would never go back on the show. I mean, she said that she's probably not going to go back on another season. And I don't blame, I mean, she's in a new relationship and things like that, but I don't blame her. I mean, that would leave a really bad taste in my mouth if, you know, it's it kind of set her up to look, desperate and um you know it it just set her up for failure and that's not what her intention was at all yeah like she wasn't going she wasn't going to the beach to get back together with joe she says that in your interview she's like we had a two-year plus relationship we would have worked that out without cameras like i didn't need to go back to the beach to have that um to have that closure yeah i thought it was such a good point when she was just like if i wanted to get back together with him why would i choose to do it on a produced reality show in two weeks in mexico with a million other people like we could have done that off camera and it is so true when you think about that but it's the truth, the editing, the, the way it looked. I mean, I always, I felt like tried to defend Kendall at the time, but but it's, it's, you also kind of want to just like suspend belief and just judge what you're watching on the screen. Like it's, it's a balance and I'm I'm happy she, you know, shared her story and it was a very interesting conversation about her new relationship and how she was at the show now. So if you're interested, go listen to the full episode. Definitely. All right. Well, let's continue talking about Bachelor in Paradise and get into our, um, who caught our attention on social media. This actually broke like right after we filmed uh, the show last week with Jesse Palmer being announced as Bachelor in Paradise host. Um, Wells Adams will be back as bartender. I mean, wh- what do you think about Jesse Palmer kind of taking over the entire Bachelor franchise now? I mean, I'm not surprised because I don't think that they would have hired Jesse Palmer if he wasn't there to be the new face of the franchise. I don't think he would have signed on to be like a half host. Like he's not, he's a professional host for a living. It's different than kind of hiring the alums. Um, But I don't think it makes any sense. I think it's just a distraction of like, we don't need it. I I just think Wells 
would have done a perfectly fine job because he basically does it anyway. And I know he'll still be behind the bar. And I do think that's like the best part of Wells is when he gets involved in the drama. But I just, I mean, I've never been to paradise, but I would have a hard time believing that it would be that hard to be behind the bar. And then for the rose ceremony, walk out or spend a couple hours a day going you know, previously on Bachelor Party, like, what does the host do in Paris? Nothing. I mean, he gets a free vacation to Mexico and just shows up for a rose ceremony. But I totally agree with you. I mean, there's no reason why Wells couldn't have handled both. And I think it would have been nice to kind of switch it up a little bit. I mean, Wells has dedicated so much time on the beach, and I think he was really hopeful that this would have been his full-time gig. Um, yeah. But unfortunately, you know, ABC has different plans, and, uh, you know, we'll see how Jesse does. What I am happy about is that Wells is still doing it and, like, not getting bitter and being yeah. like, why don't you give me the show? Like it would have been really unfortunate if he, and I don't take him as the kind of person who wouldn't do grief. I think he looks at this whole thing as like, this is crazy, but they yeah. just like keep throwing me on this beach and I'm having so much fun. And I'm sure he's making much better money now. Cause it's going to be like his like, fifth season doing it. So I'm glad he's not like jaded, but I, I mean, it wouldn't be a shock for someone to be like, I feel like I'm getting screwed here. Right. Mm-hmm. Like kind of like Tasha kind of seemingly did when like she, they didn't get the bachelor gig and she left the podcast. Like she wasn't going to half do it. Um, and I'm glad not that Wells is half doing it, but I'm just like glad that he's, he's still good to be around. Yeah, me too. I think he brings a, a really fun energy to the show. And obviously he's been there, done that. So uh, a new perspective, but it'll be interesting to see. I love paradise and I can't wait for it to come back. Oh my God. I know. Oh. Um, well, to wrap it up, to come full circle, my moment is this reel from behind the scenes of JoJo and Jordan's wedding. There's been so much good wedding content, and I know a lot of it's like professional photos that we don't even have permission to share. But this one is from the bridesmaids, like hyping JoJo up, and I just thought it was so cute. And I thought the bridesmaids dresses were awesome, and I think JoJo is just so freaking beautiful. So really here's a reel of JoJo on her wedding day. <laughs> They are honestly like the most beautiful couple of all time. They really are. Yeah. Gonna, it, gonna be it, some beautiful Rogers babies in the future. Oh yeah. yeah. Cannot wait for that. And maybe, you know, maybe Uncle Aaron will come through at some point. Maybe he know. will. Maybe he will. All right. Well, Sarah, thank you for running down all things Bachelor with me as always. Anytime. All right. Well, guys, keep commenting, keep subscribing, and we will see you next week for more Bachelor news. And like Sarah said, check out um, the Here for the Right Reasons podcast if you want to listen to the full interview with Kendall. We'll see you guys next week.